Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, for he has done great things. From January until now, he has done great things. And I will exalt no one else. I will exalt nothing else but the name of Jesus. I celebrate no one else or nothing else but Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Not Santa Claus, not gifts, all these things, but I lift up the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus has lifted me. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless his holy name. Brothers and sisters, I just want to share something with you real quick. <clears throat> I'm going to try to make this as fast as I can. Sorry for the noise in the background. I want to share something that a subscriber shared with me. Brother Levi from all the way in India. He brought something to me that I never thought of. And it's deep. And I also want to share also a vision that my 15-year-old daughter got last night. And that vision is for the remnant. You need to hear what the Lord told her to tell me. To tell me. And I want to share it with you. Bless the name of Jesus. Here goes. My brother from India, he commented on the video of what is the mark. And he shared something. He pointed out something to me. And this is what he said. He says that the mark of the beast cannot be what majority of the body of Christ is waiting for. A tattoo upon the forehead and a tattoo 666 on the, the palm of the hand. It cannot be a ta just a tattoo. It cannot be a tattoo. He pointed out, he said, there are many believers out there who have tattoos all over their body. Are we saying that they will not be saved? Okay, I'm talking, let's go even clearer. There are persons out there with 666 that is tattooed on their bodies. There are persons out there with Baphomet images tattooed. Females of Baphomet um, images tattooed on their necks, their backs. Are you saying that having a tattoo, a Baphomet tattoo, or having 666, be specific, the Bible speaks of 666. Let me be focus on 666. The number of the man. Will these people be doomed? Because in darkness, in ignorance, a girl went to a party and was wiling out and got drunk and got carried away and got a strange tattoo of 666. Will their, will, 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 will their sins not be forgiven? Most definitely, if they repent and seek the Lord, they will be forgiven. You know why? Because all of these things are done on the outward part of the body. The Word of God tells us that we are going to be changed from this corruptible body. We are going to shed off this corruptible body, our outward appearance. All that is done on the outward, once we accept the gospel of salvation, once we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, and once we walk before the Lord in fear and trembling, we are going to lose this corruptible body. Bless the name of Jesus. And so many, I know quite a few brothers who have tattoos. And I know that they are serving the Lord 
and serving the Lord faithfully. But the mark of the beast is something that is you cannot be redeemed. You are unredeemable. Once you take the mark, you have no lot nor part with God. What am I pointing out? Is that the mark of the beast is more of the inward than the outward. The focus of, as my brother pointed out, he says that life is in the blood. And so the target of the enemy is in the blood. It's in your DNA. The focus is on the inside. Just as we normally sing the song that says, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. This is what the enemy also wants to do. He wants to work from within out. He's a copycat. And so I just wanted to bring that forward. But my brother pointed out that the enemy is not about getting a tattoo on our forehead, on our, on our forearm, um, 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 666. The agenda is deeper than that. The agenda is to be able to go on the inside, to target the mind, to control my God Almighty, to enslave. And so, I found a scripture today, bless the name of Jesus. It was brought to me today to confirm what I'm saying. Again, I apologize for the noise in the background. Um, and it is in, let's look at 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11 first. Hear what it says. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. We who? The remnant. It has to be the remnant. The remnant are not ignorant of the devil's devices. And that is why we, the remnant, we all say we cannot participate with this. We cannot, we cannot take this. We cannot take this. Um, forgive me for that sorry about that we cannot take this we cannot take this bless the name of jesus he says lest satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices are we going to allow satan to get an advantage of us by deception by getting in, getting on the inside and start to work on changing the God consciousness, shutting down the God consciousness. I warn, it's a warning, a warning. I'm sending this warning throughout the globe. Don't allow the devil to get an advantage of us. Because the minds of the people are changing already. People are transforming already. Remnant. The behavioral pattern of people. I've gotten many reports where persons are experiencing hell in their houses right now with those who have been deceived. Churches are experiencing a lot of crazy stuff from believers who was walking um, um, soberly, but now they have become drunken. Let's look at um, Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Hear what it says. Hear what 2 Corinthians 6 says. It says, from verse 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked, together with unbelievers for what fellowship at righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion at light with darkness I used to read this scripture and believe that the Bible is just talking about unsaved don't become companies with the unsaved you know men don't marry to an unsaved girl um, girl you are saved, don't marry to an unsaved boy. I thought it was 
Simply as that. But what the Lord brought forth today is that when he says, be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers, even within the body of Christ. What is happening now, my brothers and sisters? The, there's a separation that is taking place. It's nothing that I am excited about. It's nothing that I'm enjoying. But the reality is that multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. The decision that many makes at this time is creating a wedge between the believers and the unbelievers. The unbelievers are those who will buy into the deception. The unbelievers are those who no matter the proof that you bring forward, no matter the, the, the word that you bring forward, they will not believe. They will not receive what you're saying. And so it's a waste of time. What verse 14 is saying, it's a waste of time to, to, to have communion with unbelievers, to be a part of unbelievers when at the same time, all they will do is rubbish what you're saying. All they will do is mess up, you know, pollute your thoughts. They will say words. They will persecute you. They will say all manner evil against you. And so the word of God tells us, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And I know that a lot of persons who used to call me, don't call me anymore. A lot of persons who used to text me and have a conversation with me, they, they don't do it anymore. Bless the name of Jesus. God help us. Let's go further into this passage. Um, verse 16 says, And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? Hear the word of the Lord. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Remnant, ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Let me break this down. The question was first asked, and what agreement at the temple of God with idols? Can we, Remnant, make an agreement with the enemy? Because you need your job. Because you have to work. Because you have to travel. Because you have to go to school. Because you have to go to college. Because of this tyranny throughout the pharmacare system. The Lord is saying, we cannot, um, we cannot make an agreement with idols. Today, I am watching the body of Christ idolizing science. Science has become an idol. It's a global theme. Follow the science. Science has become an idol. The only way out of this chaos, they say, is the science. Not Jesus. Not our God. My God. Idols. The world leaders have become an idol. Many people believe that if they just follow what their world leader says, then things will go back to normal. Dr. Fuji and, and, and all these. Ah, God help us. Idols. Idols. We cannot make an agreement. For ye are the temple of the living God. Why? Because we are the temple. The word of God says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them. God wants to live in us. God, look, you know, once we accept Christ, automatically the agreement with God is for him to come in and dwell, is to stay. My God. And I will be their God. 
once we allow the Lord to enter, he says that he will be our God. Such beautiful words. And they shall be my people. All those who allow God to dwell and to live on the inside. He says, you shall be my people. Remnant, the Lord is saying, you shall be my people. But first we have to be like Daniel. Where we have to purpose in our hearts that we will not defile the temple. Bless the name of Jesus. Verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them. You know what the Lord says? Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Set the Lord. It's not my saying. And so, many of you are in some churches that the pollution is started from the leadership, the corruption, the poison is spreading from leadership. How long are you going to stay there? Huh. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. We have to find those of our kind. We have to know, join with the believers. We cannot stay. The Lord does not want us to be a part of unbelievers. And be separated, said the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. He did not say things. There is a thing at this time that is becoming more and more mandatory throughout the, throughout the world. This thing, the Lord says, touch not. This thing that you cannot work without, cannot travel without, cannot go to school without, the Lord says, touch not. Oh, Jesus. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You hear what the Lord says? This is automatic. If you touch not, the Lord says, and I will receive you. Remnant, if we resist. Remnant, if we touch not. Bless the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying, I will receive you. Bless the name of Jesus. Verse 18, the Lord continued to speak. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters. Such beautiful words. Said the Lord Almighty. So you see Paul was prophesying. This verse, this word was prophetic. You realize how Paul ended by saying, Say the Lord. So Paul makes sure that we all get this. This, this was not Paul saying. At the end of it he says, Say the Lord. And 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 we will be, and he says, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord. Almighty. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. And so, I am sorry for all those who are waiting for a tattoo. With 666 on the forehead and 666 on the palm of the hand for the mark of the for the mark of the beast. By then you will be already deceived if that's what you're waiting for. Because the work of the Antichrist, the devil himself, is about from within out. As the Lord desire to dwell in us. So that we can be his people. The devil also wants the opportunity. A permanent, a permanent setting. Where we will give our bodies to him. And he will be able to dwell in us. So that we can be his people. That old serpent. A copycat. Finally. My daughter... In devotion this morning, she said, I got a vision from the Lord. And my wife and I, 
when our children speak like that, we always give them the opportunity to share. <laughs> and so she said, I was in my sleep last night, deep sleep. And she said, this thing became so real. She said, it was so real. She said, I was walking on, on a road and on my journey, I was in my head, I was thinking and I was saying, my, 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 my father, which is me, my father always says, telling me about earthquakes and things to come. <coughs> How am I not seeing all of this? All these things my father is talking about. All these earthquakes. How am I not seeing this? When are these things are going to take place? I thought they would be here already. <coughs> Sorry. And she said, suddenly she looked up. There was a mountain before her. Hear that again? A mountain. I just got a vision the other day with a mountain. And she said when she looked up on the mountain, she saw an old man. And this old man, <laughs> she said she has never seen of his kind ever in her lifetime. He was dressed in an old white robe. <coughs> Sorry, he had a stick. I believe that she saw a rod. She said a funny looking stick. It was a rod. <coughs> Sorry. And she said that he had whole white hair and he had a long, very long beard. She said she has never seen a man like him in her time. And she said this old man said to her, My judgments are not released because my people are not ready. You hear this remnant? The old man said to her, my judgment are not yet released because my people are not ready. And she said the old man fixed his eyes on her and he said, tell, tell him that my people are not ready for what is ahead. The old man instructed my daughter to bring back a message to me. And she told me, she said, Dad, it was you. The old man said, tell him that my people are not ready. Wow. All week, I was saying to my wife, of what I am seeing happening. I saw a sister of mine got a, a news the other day, a phone call from America, and she was just crying away. This person did not meet in a car accident. She didn't heard of this person um, in the hospital, critical condition. Just a phone call that uh, a relative of hers have relationship issues. And she was crying. She was crying. And I was there looking at the sister and I was just saying, we are not ready. I also watched certain things concerning my wife. And I was saying to her the other day, I was saying, hon, based on what I'm seeing, you are not ready for what is coming. You are not ready for the breaking news that is to come. And many of you might be watching this video and saying to yourself, I am ready. But please take a pause and remember Peter. Jesus said to Peter, I, I don't remember what Jesus said to Peter, but Peter says, Lord, I am willing to die for you. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus says, Peter, by the time the cock crow thrice, three times, you're going to deny me. And Peter was like, Lord, you don't know what you're saying. 
Peter honestly believed, like many of us, that we are. He was. He was. He was really of the view that he was ready. Remnant, I will be the first today to say, I'm not ready for what is coming. And when I declare that, and when I confess that, what I'm doing is positioning myself in prayer. Knowing that I'm not ready, I know what I need to do. And those of you who will confess the same, I'm not ready. Are you ready to be walking over dead bodies, left, right, and center? Are you ready to lose many loved ones in a day like Job? Mm, Jesus. Are you ready for the breaking news? Earthquakes, tsunamis. I was shooting at my family today while we were in gathering or having our service. I reminded them of Port Royal. When Jamaica, when Jamaica was recorded in Port Royal as the bloodiest city in the world, right here in little Jamaica, in history, History tells us that throughout the world, Port Royal, Jamaica was the most bloody city. And the sin of men went up into the nostrils of the Most High. Ezekiel 9, read it. When iniquity gets to the extreme where God says enough is enough, Port Royal was struck with an earthquake. And in that city, in the aftermath, only one man lived to, to, to tell this, the, the tale. Right in Jamaica. A part of Jamaica is now in the sea, in the Caribbean Sea. It was torn off under the destruction of the earthquake. In all the people that were at Port Royal, one man lived to tell the, state, um, tell the tale. God told me two years ago, there's a great earthquake coming to Jamaica. And when it hits, it's going to turn the entire island upside down. It's going to geographically change our landscape. God told me when, when, when he visited me concerning this earthquake. He says, this is going to be the big one. And this one will wake the sleeping church up. Right here in Jamaica. But the Lord used my daughter to tell me. Last night, this morning. We are not ready. And for all the judgments that is to eat the earth, I believe on a general scale, when God looks down, believers, you are not ready. We must pray. We must pray as Jesus pray himself into the cross. We likewise must pray ourselves into what is coming. Love you all. God bless you. God bless you.